So, pick a side. Captain America 3, Civil War, also known as Avengers 2.5. Directed by the Russo brothers in 2016, a budget of $250 million, and a worldwide taking of $1.153 billion, it netted itself a nice little profit of $903 million, less all marketing and associated costs, starring everyone they could manage to get their hands on, but primarily starring Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., Scarlett Johansson, Sebastian Stan, and Daniel Brawl. Also introducing Tom Holland, Martin Freeman, Chadwick Boseman, and Marissa Tomei to the MCU. And then, you know, everybody else. So first up, let's acknowledge all the action sequences in this film. They are incredible. It's exceptionally well choreographed, well shot, well scripted, well paced. It's got the now expected Marvel polish to the movie and then has taken up a couple of notches as well. It spans the globe, it's got that centerpiece, big title fight, comic book issue feel. It blends and it weaves some new concepts, some new characters. It's got so many different moving parts, it could have been a bit of a train wreck. It could have been quite the uh, convoluted jigsaw puzzle jumble. But they pulled it off. They actually managed to knit all of these characters and all these concepts and all these different approaches and philosophical ideals and politics and agendas. Meshed it all together, made a workable story, made an excellent story, really managed to deliver on what everyone was hoping to get. Doesn't mean everyone's happy. There's always someone who isn't happy with something. You cannot please everyone all the time. But this was a pretty high percentage of very happy Marvel nerds. Here's a bit that really sticks in my mind. And this is, this is what I got after the consecutive viewings. The fact that they didn't lose the espionage drama sort of feel from Cap 2. There's less of it, obviously, but it's still there. That close, almost personal drama attached to Steve Rogers and his world, his life, his outlook, and the people around it. Everything that makes him him and everyone that influences his decisions and his actions. All, all very closely. Despite the incredible parade of characters in this, it's still a Captain America movie. More than anything else, this movie is about actions and consequences, and the choices and the guilt that come along with that. They actually spent far more time than I thought they were going to, really looking into the guilt complex. What drives the characters to make the choices they've made? And the fears, what are they afraid of? Why, why do some of them fear the Accords? Why do some of them embrace the Accords? And the sides they choose aren't always the ones you expect. I mean, Tony Stark is driven by guilt and fear of the future. He's afraid of what he saw in his visions to come true, and he's full of guilt from all of his previous decisions and choices. He keeps causing his own biggest problems. Then you've got Steve, and he is a government man. He spent most of his life being the good soldier, and he's seen in the previous movies, he's seen how those decisions and choices and people in control and high levels of control can sometimes get twisted, corrupted, and everything breaks a la Captain America 2. He still seems to believe in the system itself, but it's just the people in it he has no trust for. And that's where his fear is coming from. I think I'm more Team Iron Man than I am Team Cap. Personally, I think both of them screwed up. Both of them uh, have missed the point of each other's point, so to speak. No one's on the same page, and because of that, we've got some Major League friction. There you go. So with all those thoughts rattling around in my head, the whole airport battle, which was great, has a different level of complexity to it. It's now Team Iron Man trying to uphold the Accords and bring everyone in line. And then while Team Cap does oppose these ideals, they have something to do. They've actually got a totally different agenda, and Tony's literally in the way. My very favorite part of this movie is at the very end, where normally you confront the bad guy, everyone reconciles and... Ah! What is it with today? Confronts the bad guy, reconciles the differences, and saves the day, the bad guy wins. He really does. The movie closes with, yeah, Zemo is in jail, he's been arrested, he's been caught, but ultimately his objectives, he achieved them. It ends up being a violent end to a story of loss and grief and betrayal. It's very personal. At the end of this, it is as personal as it can get for these heroes, and it echoes on throughout the rest of the MCU. Much like Cap 2, Cap 3 has actions and decisions that cause a ripple throughout the rest of the MCU and change it, well, permanently. I'm out of time, so we'll make this easy. 
No surprise, it's at the top. And finally, whose side would you choose? Hope you're having a good week. Catch you later.